20 years ago, Peter Pites had a vision to touch the lives of people who have heard these dreaded words, you have cancer. From that vision, with encouragement from his then friend, Jan Ringler, and now Mrs. Jan Pites, Peter endowed the Pites Cancer Support House. Over the 20 years, thousands of people have been able to say that hurt has been changed to hope. That vision also encouraged us here at Baxter Regional Medical Center to look at supporting three other community educational houses, the Rappel Diabetes Learning Center, the Murak Center on Aging, and the Sleeman Center for Women. We're so grateful for this vision that Peter had with the encouragement of Jan to touch the thousands of lives over these 20 years. So from the thousands of patients who have already been touched to the thousands of patients that will be touched, we say thank you, Peter and Jan. We love you and we give you a big, big hug. I'm Katherine Sawyer, and to those who know me, know how passionate I am about the Pites Cancer Support House. My love and passion run deep for this house, and also on a personal level. My first contact with the Pites Cancer House was when my mother was diagnosed with cancer. I came in to find her a hat and some scarves to send her, even though she lived far away, I wanted to make her feel better. I found myself in the wig room, they were wonderful. We found some hats and scarves and she just loved them. It was only a few years later when I would return to the Pites Cancer Support House, only this time it was for me. I had just been diagnosed with breast cancer. I had the same fear that I came to recognize later in most everyone else. Where, where am I going? What am I gonna do? How will I get through this? I ventured into the wig room where I met up with TJ. Scared about how I would look without my hair, we tried on wigs and before you know it, we were laughing and having a great time. I came home with a wig, several hats and a good feeling that I could handle whatever was coming my way. To this day, I have retold that story many times and TJ and I are good friends. I was so impressed with the house that I volunteered that summer to help out at the Pink for Pites Rodeo. I was still going through cancer treatment at this family-friendly event, I met many cancer patients who were in treatment, have gone through treatment, and others who were many years beyond. It gave me great hope. I had such a great time that I volunteered for many years to follow. After I'd finished my treatments, I asked if I wanted, they asked if I wanted to be a volunteer to meet up with people, meet up with women who were going through breast cancer I agreed and went through the hospital training. I found it so rewarding to be able to give encouragement and relate to each client by listening, often sharing my own stories and experiences. It felt good to be the calm in the fears I now recognize in so many when faced with a cancer diagnosis. I was at work one day when I received a phone call asking if I would serve on the Pites Cancer Support House Advisory Board. I was so honored uh, to, and thrilled to be asked and to bring new ideas to the board that would help those who are coming into the house looking for support. I was able to plan and attend the Women's Cancer Retreat. What an incredible experience. Year after year, I would see women show up on the first day who were totally apprehensive about the whole idea. Slowly they would listen to each other's stories. They would get more comfortable by the end of the weekend and left with such a great feeling, new friends and wishing the weekend would last even longer. I believe this is one of the best experiences the Pites Cancer House has to offer. Today I continue to serve on the advisory board and yes, once again, I found myself in the wig room and undergoing treatment. I found some hats and wigs and just had a great time. Only this time I was a pro, I wasn't so scared. 
I can't begin to tell you the information that I've learned from both the men and women who attend the group meetings and share their experiences. The support I've received and the friendships that began at the Pites House and have continued all these years. The Pites Cancer House is such a wonderful gift and blessing to our community. I have seen so many walk through that door with such fear and confusion and walk out with peace of mind and direction. The support groups, the monthly events, the wigs, the prosthesis, the binders of information, the one-on-one, -on -one, the friendships, the laughter, the tears, and even, yes, the hugs. I've seen it all, and it's amazing. This house that lives, this house has touched in the friendship that it has fostered. The cancer patients of every type that have been helped in their time of incredible need. And let us not forget all those we've lost along the way who have touched our hearts. I wanna thank Jan and Peter Pice for their vision and for endowing this house and for their continued involvement. I also wanna thank the hardworking advisory board because I know how hard they work. The donors and the staff and volunteers and all those who make this house possible. Thank you so much. Congratulations to the Pipes Cancer House for 20 years, and here's to 20 more. My name is David McConkey, and uh, I was introduced to the Pipes House by a friend of mine who came to see me in the hospital as I was recovering from my surgery for prostate cancer. And that was in uh, November of 2013. And at the earliest opportunity after that, I came here to uh, attend my first meeting of the Men's Cancer Support Group. And uh, right away, I discovered that the confusion and fear that was associated with cancer in my mind uh, was understood by everyone in that meeting and that they had undergone the same thing and that they were all quite willing to uh, help me through those things. And uh, that kept me coming back. And I've been coming back ever since. Uh, and I have, uh, I have figured out that while I've recovered physically uh, from my cancer, that uh, it was not a given that I was going to recover mentally as easily as I did physically. And I think that without the assistance of these group meetings in the Pites House, that I would have had a much more difficult time in that regard. My wife has been here for several meetings and uh, she fully appreciates what I'm going through and what the Pites House brings to that issue. And I think I would have had a much more difficult time for the last seven years had it not been for this group, this house, the people here. Uh, I also wanted to mention that one of the first things that happened when I came here was the, the Pites House gave me a huge binder that was full of information about prostate cancer specifically. Uh, all kinds of resources, uh, web pages that I could go to, uh, just uh, facts and data about the prostate cancer all free to me and it was an amazing collection of information that I know I couldn't have gotten myself uh, easily at all. And I fully appreciated that and I made good use of every bit of it. Uh, I'm gonna keep coming back here. I've, I believe that I'm as close to recovered from my cancer as I will ever be, but I'm gonna keep coming back because number one, I'm able to talk to other people who are now treading the paths I've already uh, tread. 
But secondly, it helps me realize how grateful I am every time I come to a meeting and listen to other people's stories. I'm Cindy Heron, and this is my husband, Jim. Um, two years ago, I was diagnosed with breast cancer and um, had chemo and radiation and seven surgeries in the last two years. Uh, right after I was diagnosed, my friend wanted me to go to the Pite Center and I didn't know what it was or anything. I was completely devastated and scared. And I went to the Pites Cancer Center with my friend and I got lots of information and they helped me with anything I needed, emotional support. And um, I've just had the best of uh, I've had the best relationship with um, the Pites Cancer House and I felt so thankful to them that I'm now a volunteer and we're celebrating our 20 year um, anniversary and I'm just so thankful that the Pites House is here in Mountain Home where I live. Have anything else? I, um, well, it was a Pretty much shocked when we found out Cindy had cancer, but she's a real upbeat person, and uh, she came through the treatments real well. And uh, she was talking about this the Pipes house here, and uh, started going here quite a bit and coming on Wednesdays and helping make the quilts. And I think while she was still in treatment, she decided that she'd like to be a volunteer here because she saw the all the good things that happened here at this place. And uh, I think it's really been a big help for her to do that and to try to help other people, you know, gotten that kind of news. Good afternoon. My name is Mike Wilcox. I am a three-time cancer survivor. My first time I had cancer was back in Minnesota. And then when I had cancer, there was no support group for men. All kinds of support group for women with breast cancer, but none for men. And I went through a lot all by myself with time, first time being having cancer. But then I moved to Mountain Home and I was diagnosed with prostate cancer. And then I heard about this, the Pike Center. And it really helped me a lot because before I was on my own down here, I had a chance to talk to other men who had prostate cancer and what kind of treatment they had and it gave me a good chance to understand what kind of treatment I wanted. So when my treatment time come, I knew what I was against, what could happen, what wouldn't happen. Now, back in 2016, I had colon cancer again, and I also then had the Pike Cancer Center to help me out again on all my information to read about colon cancer that had metastasized to a different part of my body. And that way, there again, I knew what I was up against because all the articles they have to read here really helps a lot and I appreciate Mountain Home and the best thing is I don't have to dish out a lot of money to come here to get this information. It's always dished out to me free and I can call here anytime I want and they'll help me out with anything. I have a port on my body right now and I have a seatbelt that runs across my port. Melissa here at the center give me a pad to put on there so my seatbelt does not rub against my port in my chest so it doesn't hurt me. So I could talk for days, but we're not gonna have that much time. So, but I support this group a lot, an awful lot. Okay, thank you. My name is Judy. And when we retired and moved here to Arkansas, I had been in the corporate world for 37 years and found retirement was a real shocker. Uh, needless to say, it was, it was a whole new ball game. But after I'd been here for three years, I discovered I had cancer. After I had my first cancer treatment, I received a letter from the Pites House, and it was introducing me to the Pites House. It had a schedule of all the meetings and stuff in it, and it was very interesting, so I came to one of the meetings and found out what the whole place was all about, 
Um, I needed a wig at that time. They showed me the wig room. They gave me a binder that told all about the cancer I had. And it was a really good introduction to the Pites House. And once I finished all my treatments, I decided I wanted to volunteer here. And really, that was one of the best moves I have ever made. <clears throat> one of the things that I really like about volunteering here is being able to work with the clients on one-on-one, -on -one, being able to explain to them uh, this binder that we have for any kind of cancer there is. We have a special binder and I go through that through them every chapter to tell them what to expect, how things can go for them, um, and answer any kind of questions they have for them. And then after a couple of years I was here, the lady that had been doing data entry uh, left and because I'm a past computer person, I volunteered to get in on that end of working at the Pites House also and I do a lot of the data entry and anything else that Melissa can think of that I can do to help her on that end. But really the best thing about the Pites House is being able to help the clients on a one-on-one -on -one basis to tell them that they, there's somebody here for them all the time, um, whether you're coming in for a wig or whatever, or for a meeting, or just you want somebody to talk to. And that's, that's really the best thing is being able to help people like that. Hi, my name is Kelly Long. Um, I just moved here about 10 years ago. And um, I come to the Pites Cancer Center here on Wednesdays, we do a lot of sewing and crocheting. And um, I like to sew the pillow port seat belt covers for patients that have a port. I like being here because when someone new comes in and they're, it's their first time, experiencing a cancer. Um, I've been through it, so I know what I can recommend and what to do. This place is wonderful. Melissa and everyone who volunteers, they're always just warm, open. They have a big heart. They take time to listen to you and help you and give you all the information that you need. And if they don't have it, they'll get on top of it and do their research to print out information or, or whatever you need. They're just here to help and just wonderful people here. My name is Pat Zander. Um, I like the Pites House because it was here when I learned I had cancer and I was definitely freaking out. Uh, they, came, they gave me the information I needed. They gave me the support I needed. Uh, their support groups, friends, all sorts of stuff you can do here and they're just great, wonderful people. My name is Dr. Bruce White. I'm a medical oncologist. I've been here for 30 years uh, practicing in Mountain Home. And we are so thankful for the support of Jan and Peter Pites and the Pites House uh, because it's really phenomenal that in a town this small, you can have this kind of community support uh, for our cancer program. And it's just, just happy 20th anniversary and we're looking for another 20 years. Hi, I'm Sherry Smith. I uh, have lived here for over 20 some years and my husband last year had to have um, multiple abdominal surgeries resulting in a colostomy. Uh, we received the wonderful inpatient care followed by home health services and thankfully the home health nurses directed me over here to the Pites house not only as a caregiver, but also for the knowledge um, for my husband. Um, we have a ostomy support group here. Um, it was wonderful. I learned a lot. I brought information home. It guided me so that when home health left, my husband and I were able to continue to care for the fortunately temporary colostomy. Um, 
and he has now had a reversal, successful, and uh, living life and, uh, in the beautiful uh, Ozark area. Actually, I think he's uh, probably out fishing today. Why am I thankful? I'm thankful for this house. I'm thankful for the programs that this house has given and offers to this community. And my husband and I are completely blessed for the ostomy program, which meets once a month here uh, for support and for information and for self-care. I'm Dmitry Zak, I'm a medical oncologist and hematologist. Been working with uh, Baxter Regional Medical Center here in Mount in Home since uh, June 2019, so it's a little bit more than a year. Uh, I greatly appreciate help and support from Pites House. We're really fortunate to have such wonderful team and uh, we celebrate their 20 years anniversary. Our patients, our, our doctors, our nurses, our staff, greatly appreciative of your help and your support. We're really fortunate to work with you and uh, we appreciate your help and thank you, Emily. I'm Stacy Boyette. Um, eight years ago, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. I was 40 years old. We were living in Tennessee at the time. We were shocked, scared. Um, we had no idea what steps to take next. If we would have had a Pites Cancer House, we would have known the resources available to us. They had the mastectomy boutique, wigs, um, caregiver support groups. Yeah. I'm James Boyette and um, as the caregiver I was um, obviously in a, in a rough situation. She didn't know what to do, I didn't know what to do. Um, it would have been a blessing to have something like this and, and I've been fortunate enough to serve on the board here and I know Stacy's taken on that role for me since I stepped down. Um, this, this facility that we have here is it, it means more than anybody here could ever know. Um, there are only so many in the U.S. and the opportunity to have these these uh, accessibilities with the information like she was mentioning, um, it, it just gives you that peace of mind that we honestly never had. And it's been a blessing to get to know the people who have come through here that have, have needed these um, opportunities, yeah, these accessibility. So, um, we're very thankful for the opportunity to be part of this. Hi, I'm Jay Chafin, a local business owner here in Mountain Home. And I've thoroughly enjoyed the last five years that I've been able to serve as a Pites board member. There are multiple reasons why I wanted to join the board, but the primary one is I can't think of anybody that hasn't been touched or affected in some way by cancer, including myself, with multiple family members that have fought the battle. And I just wanted to help somehow. Not to mention that the positive leadership that Melissa and Jan bring to the board on a daily basis is just incredible. I don't know two others with more compassion and just a genuine heart for helping people that are taking care of others than they have. One part of the service that I really enjoy are the events that we get to put on, such as Pink Out for Football, the Racing for the Cure, and especially the Rodeo. Uh, the rodeo, it's two fun-filled nights of awesome volunteers of all ages coming together with the heart of it to make sure we promote awareness and provide support for all those uh, fighting this fight. So it's a, a tremendous opportunity for us to get out there and serve our community. Serving in this role has been such a blessing for me and my kids over the years. All the wonderful people and the events that we've been part of have left so many positive memories. In the end, it just reminds us how vulnerable we are and how to, we should treasure every relationship we have on a daily basis. And whether or not you have uh, that amazing support at your house, if you ever have to fight this battle, know you'll always have it at the Pites Cancer Support House. Hi, I'm Terry Ware. And it's my pleasure to be here with you all today to tell you a little bit about my experience with the Pites Cancer Support House. Currently, I'm on the advisory board. This is my third year, I think, and this year I'm chairman of this advisory board, something I never imagined 
uh, doing. I just wanted to be an Indian, not a chief. At any rate, I'm so thankful that we're getting to celebrate 20 years. This is just an amazing accomplishment for this house, for this hospital. And I'd like to tell you how it has impacted my life. First, some years back, I walked through the doors needing help. My husband had been diagnosed with a strange and rare form of liver cancer and I knew nothing about it. I walked in empty handed with full of questions and I walked out with help, a smile, a hug, and a big binder that had every bit of information that they could possibly come up with for me. It was very reassuring and very helpful and I was so very thankful. About two years later, I was asked to be a part of this board and when I was first asked, I wasn't ready to give back. I was still in my own personal grieving stage. But in, in time, I was ready to be a part of this also. And it's been my honor, as I said previously, to watch what happens at this house and to work with Melissa and the other volunteers. We are so thankful for Jan and Peter and their original gift and their guidance as we go through ways to help all people who are dealing with cancer. As we say about the virus hasn't stopped, nor has cancer stopped during the virus. We still are busy with clients and we still need support. I personally, in honor of this 20 years, plan to do something for this house in the terms of 20. 20 for 20. $20, 20 quarters, 20 nickels, $25 bills. I'm not sure how I'm gonna do it, but I wanna give back and I hope others of you would be able to do the same. It's just such an honor that since we can't do a big party, we can do this to say thank you to all the people in the community that help, who volunteer, and who receive help. We're thankful that you were brave enough to enter the doors, come through those doors just like I was. I'm Mary James. I came to Mountain Home in 1965 before and I had known who Peter was but I was so grateful when he decided to build this house provide these services and my husband was a pipeliner we lived all over the United States and so I had friends in many places several that had cancer you know and so I was very supportive of him always because most places don't have a facility like this that we can get help. And I was very proud of it. And then I got cancer uh, four years ago. So now I truly know how great they are. And I have not partaken of all of the things that they offer because I just didn't want to do, I guess I didn't want to talk about it, but uh, Melissa has been just wonderful. And to be able to come here and get things that you need. And I, I talk to people all the time that have no way to do that, you know, where they are. And so we are very, very fortunate to have the support house here. I'm Mary Olson. I knew that when I retired, I wanted to volunteer. I wanted to give back to the community. I chose the Pites House because of the history of cancer in our family. My husband and I are both survivors. He lost his only sister and his mother. I lost both my parents and we lost our son. There are 17 members of our family have had cancer, only four of us surviving. We celebrate that survival. I can relate to the patient and the caregiver. I can give patients hope and the family hope because I'm a 20 year survivor. My brother is a five year pancreatic cancer survivor. People come to the Pites house at a low point in their life. I make it my goal to make them laugh or at least smile before they leave. I think humor is the best medicine and when I see them smiling when they leave, I feel good. I have made my day and theirs. I get more back than I can possibly give to them.
they made sure when my husband was in surgery that I had, they brought me lunch every day. They brought me and made sure I had supper before I went home. Because the Pites House, the volunteers, and those coming to Threads of Hope have become a second family for me. They're, they're there for me, anything I ask they would do. And they know that they can call me for what they need. My name is Jody Stubblefield, and I volunteer here at the Pites House with Threads of Hope. My idea came from making pillows when I lived in Michigan for breast cancer patients who had mastectomies or lumpectomies. My sister had cancer and so I was doing this in my way to help her because I don't live near her. The Pites House, everybody's been so friendly and welcoming. We bring treats, we share our garden things, we talk and we share our experiences. I've learned a lot about cancer even though I've never had it before. When I first discovered the Pites House, I had come to the hospital for my uh, mammogram and I saw all these houses lined up along the way and there was an ambulance down further. I had gone in to check for my husband about a CPR refresher class. And I worked my way up, signed up for a diabetes class, and then I saw the Pites house. And I almost turned around and got in my car. But I thought, no, I've made breast cancer pillows in the past. Maybe they could use some. So when I found out that they had this group that meets on Wednesdays at one o'clock, I thought, wow, that would really be meaningful to me. I could meet people because I was new in the area, didn't know anybody, and it would let me use my talents and gifts that I was given. I enjoy my Wednesdays. I miss it when COVID was um, first came and we couldn't meet here for three months. I still worked on things at home and I worked on masks and things for the hospital and it really gave me a sense of purpose. I think the Pites House does a really nice job of information that they hand out. I've learned a lot about cancer from the ladies that are in Threads of Hope and through Melissa, they give a lot of information that I never knew before. And um, it helps me to understand a little bit more what these ladies are going through and um, or have gone through and what my sister's going through. Hi, my name is Debbie Anderson and I found the Pites Cancer Center five years ago. Uh, after being diagnosed with cancer. And being diagnosed with cancer is like nothing you've ever experienced. It's like the deer in the headlight. Uh, when you're told those, those words, you have cancer, you just don't quite know how to react. You don't know what to think and everything you've ever thought and felt and thought you knew is going through your head. As I walked to the car, I felt like I need to find somebody who understands. Um, what I'm going through because you never really know unless you're in those shoes. You think that you know, you've heard about it, you have family members that tell you, you have loved ones, neighbors, friends, coworkers, but until you're in those shoes, you never quite understand. That's how I found the Pites Cancer Center. Somebody suggested that they might be able to help me. When I walked in there that first night, I was scared and nervous, a little like I am today. Um, but you wonder how you're going to fit in. Will they understand? You know, will they like you? Will they be able to help you? From the moment I walked in the door, I felt like I had found a family. These people had walked in my shoes. They knew exactly what I was going through. A little bit different story, but basically all the same. The nicest people you'd ever want to meet. Um, you, you kind of become a family, a sorority, I sometimes called it. 
Um, I just felt like they couldn't do enough to help me with information, with looking for wigs, uh, trying to understand surgeries and everything that you're gonna go through. They made me feel like I was welcome anytime, day or night, which I took them up on that, and made several phone calls to a lot of the members who was always welcome me, always welcome me and let me know no matter day or night, just give them a call. Um, I wish I could mention all the names. I can't, but I'll never forget them. I'm one of the lucky ones who um, I'm in remission. Um, I feel that I've been very blessed, but through it all, I cannot say enough about the center and what it did for me during that journey, as well as other friends and family. But they, like I said before, they don't quite understand the way all the women, all the men, all the people of the Pites Cancer Center do. Um, you know, Jan and her husband was great, but I wanna say one thing that probably was a life-changing event for me was when I went to the retreat. I can't quite explain it, but that weekend, shortly after being diagnosed with 2022 women that, I don't know, just made you feel like they understood every single thing that you were going through. I came away from that. I went home that weekend and my husband said, how was it? And I said, it was absolutely wonderful. It was life changing for me and really gave me the courage, the strength, the energy to push through this. And, um, and I did, and I'm blessed to be here. So thank you to all of the people from the Pite Center to everybody who's going through this journey has been or going to go through it. This is a place that you can find that family, that sorority, whatever you want to call it, they're here for you. And I thank you all. How appropriate that I get to share with all of you before Peter, because I had the position chosen by BRMC to be the coordinator for the Cancer Support House before it was the Pites House. So it is just such an honor to be able to speak to all of you. And once we opened, we hit the door and the floor running. We had so many projects and, and plans for our cancer survivors here in our area. So I want to share with you a few of the things that we did and a lot of the programs are still in contact today. First is the support groups. I truly believe that they are the backbone of our program and we have support groups for both men and women, many types of cancer and we also have guest speakers that come. It is just so encouraging for the people when they have cancer that there's a place they can come to and find support. We also have bras, mastectomy bras, wigs, and turbans. And we have a smoking succession class. Now, a lot of these things that I'm telling you, we started from the very beginning and most of them were still doing. One that I thought was especially unique to our area was um, volunteer beauticians that gave of their time and they would cut some clients' hair and do makeovers. And it was through a program called Look Good, Feel Better. And this was just a really great thing that we were able to do for a while. And we all know if we look good, we do feel better. We also had smoking succession classes, which we still do. Uh, we had so many guest speakers and there are just so many different areas of cancer that you can come and reach so many different people. And we had nutrition, we, did cook, we cooked meals and would teach them what was the best type of food and all for them to have. So, probably the culmination for the women is an annual retreat. And we started this at the very beginning. And for them to be able to have a weekend 
with fellow survivors and to really bond was just a wonderful thing. What we do here, we could not do without the Pike South Board. Our board has been tremendous from the very beginning and we have so many volunteers and Melissa does an outstanding job and she keeps things rolling and our volunteers have just been awesome. So with that being said, I must say my position here when I was working for the hospital was truly the very best of my career and what a joy these two decades have been. Thank you. Thank you. You're most welcome and thank you. What an occasion, dear friends, to celebrate the 20th anniversary of the Cancer Support House. How time flies. I remember the grand opening. I remember the first anniversary, the 10th. And now we are moving at the 20th anniversary towards a quarter of a century of giving help and encouragement to those who need it. What was once a dream expressed by BRMC's uh, chief executive, Steve Erickson, has become reality, serving thousands of clients annually. When the Cancer Support House was first considered and the money for the building and operating and needing it needed to be found, we hoped that six to seven hundred clients is what we would serve annually. There was not a large information base available because there are only three in, the, in Arkansas and a grand total of 14 cancer support houses in the whole of the USA. So when the time came to endow the cancer support house, I experienced the sense of uncertainty and caution whether the operation of the house would be successful or whether the effort would make it or the effort would make it successful but only temporarily and then would wane and the hard-earned money for the project would have been lost. Two factors led me to move forward. One was 10 years earlier, Baxter Regional Hospital Foundation was created in 1989 to gather the funds from the community to have an upright car tie. Car tie, which offers cancer care with resources, team, and technology to find and treat cancer. Inexperienced, but full of enthusiasm, a small group led by professional fundraiser that we borrowed from the Walton family, raised 1.3 million to bring cancer care to Mountain Home. The giving of the community spirit in, in our town is absolutely phenomenal. The following 10 years, I served as chair of the hospital foundation and the finance committee. I knew the time had come to step up the fundraising level. That's one factor. The other factor was that Jan Ringler Director of Surgery was offered by Baxter Regional the opportunity to manage the Cancer Support House. At that time, Jan and I dated while these deliberations happened. I knew her qualifications for the job are superb, and her enthusiasm for the project was strong and catching. The Cancer Support House started to operate, and what a, what a startup it had. Through Jan Ringler, word got out quickly that the Cancer House with free, had free services and it was open, it opened its doors as part of Vector Regional Hospital. 
As more and more clients came for help, the quality and the skill of the staff improved constantly and dramatically. We were planned to be hundreds of patients and take care of hundreds of patients per year, but they become thousands of clients needing and finding help. My best guess is that we are near or over the 100,000 patients cared for for over the last 20 years at the Cancer Support House. I wanted the gift to be anonymous, but our fundraising consultant strongly encouraged me to name the gift. He explained that giving anonymously gives the receiving institution only half the benefit when compared to a named endowment. He explained further that a named gift encourages other potential donors to do the same. He was so right. Today, there is not one support house, but there are five houses serving various patients' needs. How terrific. We have so much to be thankful for and have every reason to celebrate the success of the Heights Cancer Support House and the success it has created by leading the way for others to follow. The staff, and volunteers deserve praise and credit. Melissa has continually gone the extra mile to serve her clients. The board of directors have over the years achieved almost miraculous success in raising funds for the Cancer Support House. Jane Ringler, now Mrs. Jane Ringler Peitz, and I deeply appreciate what so many have done to move forward the services given to the clients of the Cancer Support House. We wish the house continued success for years to come. I'm Melissa Hudson, the coordinator of the Pites Cancer Support House. And I just wanna say I am so very thankful to have this amazing opportunity to serve, give hope and support to those affected by cancer. There's not much more fulfilling than making a difference in someone's life. The Pites Cancer Support House is a place that makes a difference. I wanna give a big thank you to our many volunteers, our advisory board members, to our endowers, Peter and Jan Pites, and to all of our many donors who support our mission. You're the reason we continue to make a positive impact. Thank you so much for supporting our mission.